Edmund Begoli, Chief Data Officer at JIX and Chief Technology Officer at PYA Analytics, presented a talk at the Chief Data Officer Summit December 2nd through 3rd in New York City. The following interview addresses some of the high points of his talk. Dr. Begoli, what was the focus of the Chief Data Officer Summit? So the focus of the Chief Data Officer Summit was on sharing the uh, best practices and experiences. It was organized by the Innovation Enterprise and they gather uh, groups of early adopters and practitioners as a uh, speakers and the audience was very motivated to hear about the, the topics because the Chief Data Officer role is relatively new. I do think it's a very meaningful role, both Chief Data Officer and Chief Data Scientist in, in, with, the, with the emergence of the uh, large data problems and, and the luge of data. So, um, you know, they gathered the early practitioners to share their experiences with highly motivated audience. The attendees were from some of the top companies, organizations, and municipalities in the world. Yes, they were. Um, it was an, an amazing uh, roster of speakers and audience as well. So there was a uh, chief data scientist from New York Times, Chris Wiggins, um, uh, former Mayor Bloomberg's head of analytics. This was, you know, he was running this, this famous shop featured in many newspapers and what they did for the city of New York. Uh, Rachel Schrute, the author of one of the more popular data science books and now uh, head of data analytics at the News Corp. Um, representatives from Ministry of Defense from United Kingdom, from U.S. Department of Defense, major banks, brokerage companies. Uh, this, is, this was hosted at New York's financial district uh, two blocks away from the Wall Street, so all the major banks and brokerage companies were represented both among the speakers and, and among the audience. Your talk was titled Big Data, Big Gaps, Methods, Tools, and Techniques for Linking Disparate Data Sets. You posed as the global challenge the need and complexity of performing meaningful, robust, and effective linkage of disparate data sets. Please elaborate some on that. Well, you know, big data is a big buzzword these days, and people very relatively easily toss it around with the terms such as variety, velocity, and volume without going into deeper definition. And for practitioners, and this is the audience of not audience, but speakers and audience of practitioners, we know there are greater challenges than just, you know, stating a problem with these three words. So I looked into what I've encountered as a, uh, a great challenge of working with the big data, and that is linking disparate data sets together. In a old world, we would have a one relational database that would eventually be linked into another one, and we would derive results, and there were some obvious ways to link the data. When we work with a deluge of, you know, social networks, data, um, climate, demographic and other data source and putting it all together, there are some techniques needed to, to overcome those problems and they're far greater than, than in previous, what I, what I call, we live now in a post-relational world and post-relational world requires some probabilistic techniques that are beyond what is currently being put in place. Describe some of the solutions you proposed. Well, <clears throat> I really linked, linked solutions to some of the case studies and some of the practical experiences. So solutions for, for both, and they were all, these were all probabilistic matching techniques deriving from um, years or decades of stati research and statistics in so-called uh, uh, record linkage field. And they involved um, probabilistic integration of the data sources with unstructured data. So translating unstructured data into relatively structured form and then probabilistic matching names and entities found with the records found in a more structured form such as financial records or uh, um, electronic health records. And you know, this closely relates to our research right now we're doing with JIX and where P1 Analytics, JIX and others are collaborating in this space. Discuss case studies and knowledge you've acquired through research and industrial projects performed at JIX and PYA Analytics. And this really goes um, beyond JIX and PYA Analytics. It goes all the way to my you know, days at RNL where we started working with centers for Medicare, Medicaid services, and then transferred over those experience at PYA Analytics and drastically expanded in, in the private sector and now transferring it to JIX and doing it together. It's the area of, so I presented stories or case studies from healthcare and from uh, uh, forensic accounting. Forensic accounting was strictly from my commercial experience. And healthcare was really derived from almost a decade, years of working in a, in a healthcare sector. So we demonstrated an um, example of linking data coming from electronic health records, financial data, claims data, um, imaging data, and uh, pathology and radiology reports. And this is a variety of different data formats. And in the financial accounting space, um, I spoke about techniques for detecting fraud, 
uh, amongst the data that is linked between the accounts payable, accounts receivable, invoices, contracts, other legal documents in a very disparate form. And so that was, um, and that was a very challenging example. And I believe both of these resonate very well with the audience. Under your leadership, Jix is developing a future system called Photon for efficient resolution and record linkage using the latest big data API and components. How will Photon work and how will it solve the record linkage problem? Well, Photon is actually, I believe, just the one in a series of the future systems we're going to put in place. Photon itself is a uh, combination of um, compact, high-density hardware with a uh, Hadoop file system and Spark in-memory compute engine. And this Spark in-memory compute engine has multiple components. And so this is a part of the ongoing project right now that we are working for with a uh, presidential fellow in human health services trying to link um, uh, physician uh, provider sets from Medicare together with the Medicaid and we're using Spark's machine learning libraries and a core Spark's processes, processing engine and we're really trying to see how well will Spark perform. Um, Photon is a great resource, it's going to be available to academia and, and research and you know right now we're in trial process we're just currently putting it in place and we plan to build a whole um, I would say the uh, system set around this architecture if it proves itself. And we're using these very practical problems as the way to demonstrate its utility. In your view, how can academia and industry benefit from partnering with JIGS? Greatly. I mean, that's a very simple answer, is because it was a discovery for me to see uh, what a great combination of uh, human and, and computer resources are available at JIGS. So there are, you know, HPC administrators and experts in the uh, types of hardware that very few people have opportunity to work with. Uh, then there is a scientific computing group, people with a deep expertise in the related, you know, strong technical fields. And then there are machines that are very hard to find in other places, you know, either uh, high, you know, high memory machines or, or high performance computing, um, I.O. machines and so on. So um, this is the place where um, industry can come and try things out for the first time. They can um, get to get, get access, easy access to some, some great experts and, you know, use it for either um, production scenarios or use it for experimentation purposes.